Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel. Now, a few weeks ago, we did a video with Paul bracing his gable end wall. I spoke about the wind effect on gable ends and the fact that a strong wind can suck out a gable end. And Dave T, he put a comment in the video and he said, please, Roger, do a quick video on the suction effect on gable ends because I'd love to see it. Please help us by liking and sharing this because it does help to increase the views. And if we increase the views, we can make more videos. It's as simple as that. Now, believe it or not, when you get a gable end on a house wall, it can be very susceptible to wind loads. Now, those wind loads could be direct loads pushing on the wall. They could be wind rushing over the top of the roof here creating a negative pressure zone there, in other words, sucking it out, or they could even be wind rushing past the house this way, as in the case of Paul, two houses close together, both got gable ends, wind rushing through that alleyway, that can cause a suction. There's all kinds of things that build up, like vortexes and so on, that it's very difficult to calculate, but we're talking about very strong winds here. There's been a really marked increase in the number of gable walls blown out or sucked out. Now, why is this happening? Why wasn't it happening before? Well, to some extent, it's because we build a lot faster and we maybe don't take as much care. But it's also probably due to the fact that winds have got stronger. So the NHBC and all those other people who write standards, the building regulations and so on, they ask for wind restraining straps on all new buildings to counter this effect. What we've got here is a top triangle. Now, in this case, we're going to deal with masonry to begin with, and then we'll talk about timber frame houses. Now, if this is a standard cavity wall, we now have a 100 mil cavity. But the narrower the cavity and the taller the wall, the less stable it is likely to be. So as you widen a wall out, and what they used to do is build walls wider at the bottom than the top, it provided a certain amount of stability. But now we have these two thin masonry columns reaching up, sometimes through three floors, with no real restraint on them. To counter this, they put in wall ties, and the wall ties will go across the masonry like that, and they will tie those walls in together. What happens to wall ties, of course, is that they corrode. I mean, the best ones, the stainless steel ones now, should give you 100 years, but some of the old iron ones would rust away, especially if the sand was a bit aggressive, and there were certain things in there that would add to the corrosion, or the corrosion proofing wasn't very good. It's a little bit of an unknown, how your wall ties are. You can have them inspected. They will drill a hole, put in a boroscope and have a look around and see where the corrosion takes place. Now, very often the corrosion takes place just there. I don't fully understand why that is, but you get corrosion just at the point where that wall tie enters the inner skin. The wall tie may look perfectly okay, but when you look at that point there, if there's any kind of wind load, any kind of movement on that wall, it's very likely that the wall tie is going to snap at that point where it enters the internal skin. It could happen where it enters the external skin, but it rather depends. But in my experience, what I've found is very often they break off there. Correct me if I'm wrong, wall tie people. So you've got a, a wall which is tied in and if all the ties are okay, it's probably going to withstand quite a lot of forces from the wind. But when you get up to a triangle, you've got a natural sort of knuckle point on the triangle, if you like. You've got a natural point where it would snap off. So all that area there, which has no real load on it, is susceptible to a bit of wind movement. And it could only be that it's just moving like that over the years and it's loosening the mortar and it's producing horizontal cracks. Usually you'll get one along here. You might get some others. You might even get a little one there. But what then happens is that in a very strong wind, the wall will call what they call unzip. In other words, the bricks will come out one by one by one until the whole thing is gone or the whole thing will just collapse in one go and possibly kill somebody. It's very important that we look after this and we restrain it. So where do you restrain it, given the fact that you haven't got a load on it? Well, now with modern loft conversions and things like that, they very often would put a steel beam in here to support the roof so that they could take away restraints and, and straps across there 
and to stop the roof spreading they will put that steel beam across there and they may also have built a dormer out here and done away with all that and so again there's a load coming down from that roof there and that roof there on the top of the wall which is doing a great job because if you try and push a wall over and it's got a weight on top it's very difficult even when you get a sledgehammer it's hard to shift it but you take that weight off the top and you can almost blow the thing over i've actually pushed walls over physically just by giving them a little rock like that and then they go so without any load on the top we've got to think of other ways of restraining that roof and one way that it's done is if you look at this this would be the top of the cavity wall going up here and at the point where the roof joins the cavity wall in that direction if you like that's looking across at it so what we would want to do is we'd want to put in restraining straps all the way across the roof now let me just try and turn this into a bit of a 3d drawing there so you can see what's happening there's the rafters going down on the house wall and what we would be looking to do is on this gable end here we'd be looking to put restraining straps going across the roof onto the rafters and into the wall itself in other words into this bit of the wall so that would have to be put on the outside of that inner skin and not just screwed and plugged to the wall it's best if it's put actually behind the wall itself so those are dropping down I know this is a bit difficult to understand but they're dropping down inside that cavity there and also at this rafter point there are solid blocks and it's very important that this one this rafter that's nearest the gable end is also blocked up so that there's a packing piece that goes in there that prevents any kind of movement because you don't want any tiny bit of movement when that wind's blowing you don't want it to start trying to move things loose so you make sure that there's no movement there there's no movement across these rafters here and hopefully because you've got roof battens going across here you've tied the whole thing in but what I also like to do with the gable ladder is to get some kind of fixings down and bring the brickwork and the block work up inside the gable ladder so that you've given it some stability at the top and even maybe putting some kind of load on that roof if for example as we used to have you've got a purlin which is a bit of timber that goes all the way through the roof there if that's resting on that roof that can do a great deal to stabilize that gable end if you do that and you may also put some kind of restraint straps here we've got a wall plate here and we've got restraint straps which come down on our drilled and plugged into the wall there and they're put every four feet all the way around so once we've got those in once we've got the restraining straps there then we've got a much better chance of that roof don't forget you've got roofing restraining straps there there and there as it were and that will stabilize that gable end a great deal but of course you still need these wall ties these wall ties are very very important in creating what they call a diaphragm if you like where you've got two walls held together it stops them rocking like that so that's masonry walls and it's very important with a masonry wall that you check the condition of it because if it's up there above the roof line of the house if you like exposed to all the elements and if you've got rain driving in if it's soaking that gable end as often happens all the brickwork's getting wet you get a frost it starts to expand the mortar starts to produce crack lines pointing falls out and over the course of 30 40 50 years you look up at that and it's looking a little bit weak and a little bit ropey and it may well be that it's loosened all that brickwork to the extent especially at this point here to the extent that it will just fall over in one go so apart from just checking that everything is tied in nicely also check that that end is protected again you can put some storm dry on there to make sure that it doesn't absorb too much water and you can also do the pointing and just basically look after it if you're in any doubt if your neighbor's wall has fallen over somebody in your locality has had this problem with the gable end blowing out then it's a good idea just to get somebody in to just have a quick look at those wall ties check them and check that they've still got a life because if they haven't what they can do 
is they can drill in new wall ties. They normally take the old ones out because the corrosion on them tends to lift the masonry joints. So they would normally find them with a metal detector, take them out and put in a new helical wall tie going all the way across, which is resin fixed onto the inside, resin fixed onto the outside, and that stiffens a whole lot up. If that corrosion isn't too bad, they may leave those wall ties in. It just depends on what they're doing. You sometimes see if wall ties have started to corrode, you'll see where the brick courses have started to lift up and that's the corrosion, that's the rust in the wall ties that's lifting that brickwork up. So that's masonry and you can see that that's a requirement now of the building regulations to tie that masonry in. And another thing that ties gable end walls in very nicely is having a wall in the middle of them. In other words, when people start taking out internal walls, they start removing chimney breasts. You might have had a chimney going all the way up here and that was stabilizing that gable end to a certain extent. You take that away, then suddenly you've got a structure which is lacking lateral restraint. The other thing you'll find is that sometimes you've got a timber frame house. Now it may look like a brick house, it may have brick cladding on the outside, but the basic structure of the house is timber framed. And then you get different problems. You can still get the problem with it sucking out and blowing in, which happens quite often actually, especially in places like Florida and so on. So it's important when you put those trusses in that you might just have to reinforce them at certain points because if they're only gang nailed in with gang plates and the wind blows on them it can push those plates out very very easily indeed so it's important to have bracing there and they may put bracing across the roof this way and they may also because you've got timber studs going up here and very often they put those timber studs flat ways on to give them a better fixing for the boards. Maybe they've got OSB or something over the top of those, those boards. So they will put those flat way on. But of course, being flat way on rather than the other way, they're very susceptible to being pushed in and out, to being flexed. So although it's difficult, putting them the strong way, if it's a bit of four by two, putting it so that you've got the two inch there and the four inches going back makes a stronger job. And if you need to, you can actually screw a bit of 4 by 2 to the existing one that's flat to make a kind of L shape of it and help there. If you've got a timber frame gable end there, if you can get some kind of diagonal bracing in across this, and I'm not going to show you how to do that because that will be specified on the drawings. But you can see that if you can brace the roof that way, if you've got what they call a gable end ladder on there and you've got straps going across into the roof itself and you've got a bit of diagonal bracing on that roof then suddenly the whole thing is stiffened up and it becomes very unlikely that that gable end is then going to blow out. I say very unlikely rather than it will never happen because with hurricanes you know that if you get a tornado or something it can pick the whole house up in one go. Rather like the Wizard of Oz my least favourite musical, followed very closely by The Sound of Music. In fact, I don't even like musicals. Brace it, secure it, strap it up, take out as much movement as you can, and then pray that the winds will be kind to you. So I hope that's helped. I hope it's helped Dave and anybody else who's interested in this problem of lateral restraints on gable ends. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon.